Friends, at this time, we are going to continue our time of worship, and I am going to invite my sister, Maisha Marzell, to please join me uh, as we begin this time of conversation and discussion. That's okay. Take your time. Take your time. This is our transition time. Friends, over the next uh, many weeks, two or three, maybe, um, I've invited um, some brothers and sisters to come and be with me and to be in conversation with me and all of us around the issue of racism. And over the next few weeks, I have asked uh, some brothers and sisters that I admire that I think would bless us with their insight, that would bless us with perhaps some of their experiences to come and just talk. Last week we, we heard from, from Bishop Webb and over the next few weeks I'm excited about what is about to unfold because again what has been coming to me in these turbulent times has been the message from God to simply listen, to just listen to put all of my preconceived understandings and my culture and my upbringing and all the things I think I know, <laughs> to just put that on the back burner for right now and to have this unique blessing to just listen and engage. And so I have invited our sister Maisha Marcel uh, to join me this Sunday. Maisha, welcome. I am glad you are here. Uh, we've been back and forth with emails and phone calls and all kinds of things that have brought us to this moment. But before we engage in conversation, I would like to share with you uh, her bio that I took from the Binghamton University um, website uh, where she is a faculty member, and it says this. Maisha Marzell completed her Master's in Social Work at the University of Southern California and her PhD in Biohavioral uh, Behavioral Health at the Pennsylvania State University. Prior to joining the faculty of the Binghamton University Department of Social Work, Dr. Marzell was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of California, Berkeley School of Public Health and Prevention Research Center and was subsequently the assistant professor in the Department of Community and Behavioral Health at the University of Iowa College of Public Health. As a researcher, she is interested in the etiology and prevention of high-risk substance use and the improvement of mental health among racial and ethnic minority youth, college students, and athletic populations. Dr. Marzell's research interests also extend to the environmental and policy factors that can influence behavior and promote healthy lifestyles. She wants to translate scientific evidence into recommendations for substance abuse prevention, public policy, and clinical practice. Again, welcome, and thank you for taking this time to merely be in conversation. And let's begin here. Uh, as much for me as to those who are watching today and the days to come. Can you paint a little picture for us um, about Maisha? Uh, maybe your upbringing, your background, your childhood, you, wherever you want to take that. Uh, I'd like to join spirits together and, and travel down that road with you if you could reflect on that for a moment. Well, it's, it's so wonderful to be here with you right now. And, and, um, and this church has been a blessing to me. Um, in this community. I'm looking down um, at my shoes right now. It, it represents California, my Chuck, my Chuck Taylor, right? <laughs> but my Aunt Helen would be like, well, did you run to church? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, did you really get up here with some Chucks on? But um, I was sitting there when we were listening to This Is My Father's World. And my, um, my father, um, Howard Marzell, he passed away in this month um, seven years ago. I was pregnant with my, my daughter, and, um, and, and so I, this is a, it struck me because this is my father's world. So he was born in 1934 in Colfax, Louisiana, um, 
moved to um, Tyler, Texas, definitely 1934 was a time of still a segregated United States. Um, I, like I was telling you, my, my mother, Linda Marzell, um, she was 15 years younger. Um, and, um, and daddy used to always call her a little hippie. Um, she was born in Berkeley, California. And, um, and so I was raised by these two um, wonderful people. And my dad, um, he had this strength. Um, and he, as you will hear, you know, terms unapologetically black, he was. He necessarily wasn't out maybe protesting like my mom did in Berkeley during that time of People Park and, and the civil rights movement that she participated in, but he raised me in a way of, um, of being strong. And so when I listen to the education that they didn't have, you know, my grandfather um, didn't have the opportunities to have the opportunity to have the education that I have, that Sarah will have. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful time to kind of recognize that right now too. But then also to know this is my father's world that with the events that we just have been experiencing, what has changed, you know? Um, he would be, gosh, I don't do math well, especially not in public, but um, <laughs> he would be in his 80s right yeah. now, what, 80, 85? Yeah. Um, and, um, and it would be a hard time for him but then it would also be a time where, you know, we would be, you know, out water skiing and out, you know, doing hiking and, and, and living in, in God's country and, um, and us having conversations of what can we do to continue to make things better. And That's a great segue because let's go back to that childhood and mm -hmm. that strong father and, mm -hmm. and the hippie mother and, 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 and all that. <laughs> really, okay. yeah. <laughs> Well, um, if you saw their wedding pictures, you would think they were, oh gosh, that was a hot mess, but go ahead. Are there things that you remember that were being taught to you or experiences maybe that your, your mom and dad had that, that was kind of a proving ground or a, 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 along the idea of um, racial relations and such things that, that, that may have maybe produced the, the framework that you developed as you moved into life? Do you remember? Could, can we take you to the dinner table maybe as to some of those conversations yeah, that you remember? I, mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I will say that there's an, a really great book that I'm reading right now um, by Dr. Kendi, and he talks about anti-racism. And, and we can spend, you know, hours talking about that right now. I'll only just give that, um, that source that as I'm starting to dive into it, I think that's a great question that you asked, Pastor Mark, because maybe because I was a black female, I didn't have those types of conversations at the dinner table. For one thing, both of my parents worked. My dad worked for General Motors for 45 years. Um, he would go downstairs with my mom and the kids ate upstairs. So we didn't <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were not having dinner with us. They were gonna spend their time together. But those moments, um, those moments of, uh, of just having conversations with my dad about, um, I remember when I ran for, I think I was in middle school and I ran for president of something, I don't know, yeah. I, don't know I mean, whatever you do, mm -hmm. like class president, I don't know yeah. if you have that in middle school. Yeah. Um, and I was prepping for it and I was doing everything for it. And he was having talks with me about it and encouraging me, but then also prepping me. I'm not gonna cry, but, um, okay. but he also knew that, that that's not the world that he lived in. Hmm. And so he had to prepare me too, is that it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how hard you work. Sometimes this world is not gonna be fair to you. But he didn't want to, crush my spirit, yes. you know, yes. but that was a balance oh. that he and my mom always had to do with me, and sometimes it's like reflecting on that now as a mother, as a, as an older person, um, you know, 45 is still kind of young, right? 
Yes. Yes, it okay, is. Thank you. F- 45 is very young. Um, yes. Um, but, um, but I look back now, and in those years, I didn't understand all of that because it wasn't this direct of a conversation. And none of this is new, right? So it's not like you sit down and, okay, we're going to have a race talk. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yes. um, it, it's not that. So how did you handle that then? I mean, you knew it was something, and you saw the dad, your father's yeah. balancing it. How, how do you do that? How uh, you do that is like yeah. you, you, um, you go up and you do your best, and then it doesn't matter win or lose, then you come back the next day and you continue to do your best because you have the support, and, um, and, and you have the love. And I think that as a community, as growing up with... Um, as a black person in this world, it's like you just, you keep picking yourself back up sometimes when you have the losses, you know? Um, But there's examples of that in the Bible too, you know? And and you have faith and you have hope and um, and you keep showing back up and and hopefully with the love and the support of of others around you. And, and, And there's countless stories in the Bible about that. And that's what we're seeing right now too is like, um, it's, it's not about, you know, you know I was worried about this. It wasn't yes. ta- talking about a shaming or a blaming kind yes. of situation. And it's not, nobody's, we know what kind of world we live in. And we know that there's disadvantages, disadvantaged groups um, of individuals. And, and that's where, you know, we get our strength from Jesus. We get our strength from his example. We get our strength from our Lord that we go out and we do the best that we can to, you know, we strive for the best that we can to change um, what we see. And, and even getting back to that book that I'm reading about anti-racism and, and Dr. Kendi is just like, we need to, it's not a, enough to say I'm not racist, you know? Right. It's about being anti-racist. Yes. And that's when we talked about too is Jesus was a protester. Yes, he was. You know, no now doubt. I'm not a protester like out in the streets. I talked to a student a couple days ago. I know I got about like five minutes. No, you keep okay. going. You okay. keep rolling. <laughs> Don't you stop. Okay. I talked to a student. I was like, you know, I'm not, uh, that's, you know, I'm not going to be out in the streets right now. I, I, I did some of that before and, and, and peacefully and as they are as well. Um, but there's different lanes that we all are yes. traveling down right now. Mm-hmm. And, but we need to travel down those lanes and we need to own those lanes of, of giving love and compassion and, and stepping in. You know, part of my, my education right now is let me, I'm in social work right now and I'm in public health too. And to be in these two different types of pandemics, right? We've got a social justice pandemic that's been going on for decades upon, I mean, more than decades, sure. centuries. And, yes. and then we have this now, this, um, this, uh, this infectious disease, coronavirus decade, I mean, pandemic, yeah. and, and to be able to do work in that to, you know, I'm, I'm volunteering right now with the New York State Contact Tracing Program. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there's so many different ways that we can make differences. There's so many ways that the church can make a difference. And I think why we're having this conversation is, is, is it's, you know, is the church can't be silent. Right. We have to in, embrace the the social um, ills or, or social things that are going on in our country and be there for one another, support one another. You yeah. know, we wear masks to protect one another. You know, and so we need to um, we need to make change around race too and our, 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 um, the social justice and 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 what we w- witnessed with um, Mr. Floyd's killing um you know a few weeks ago um we need to we need to make changes yeah you know yeah thank you that's that's very helpful because the intent of these conversations uh that i think god put on my spirit um was to first recognize the obvious if people are tuning in right now you and i look very different we come from different backgrounds, but we are still brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. We still love each other. We still can cooperate. But in the midst of all of that, there's things that we need to understand and recognize. And I'd like to get your take on this, because I heard this just the other day, and it kind of helped me kind of sort some things out, because um, 
Oh, and, and here it is, and I'd like to get your take on it if I, if I could. And, and the, the lecturer was discussing the difference between prejudice and racism. And I never understood it this way. I'd like to get your take on it. He equated prejudice as a personal thought process and behavior that I can personally prejudge someone or overgeneralize someone and prejudice is something that's done person to person, thought to thought and I can act in a way that prejudices someone else or puts them into submission. Where racism, what the, the speaker was saying, is more of a structural, mm -hmm. institutional kind of thing that can certainly lead to, race, uh, to prejudice, no doubt about it, but the racism can be covert, over, recognized, unrecognized, but we still live in that system as, as corporate culture. Um, when you hear that, does that, does that resonate with you? That, that, because I'm all about definitions. I think so many times, whether it's the church or, or just culture, we get hung up on, we think we're defining the same thing, but we're not. We're not. Yeah. yeah. And so does that... It, and so I'm asking a lot of my brothers yeah. and sisters that question. Does that make sense where prejudice is more of an internal one-on-one -on -one relationship and racism is more of a structural, institutional thing that we live within? Yeah, and, and you know what, I don't, and you know, this is, I'm not an expert on any of this. And, and my thing is, 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 so racism, definitely, I think when we start thinking about that systemic racism, when we think about policies and those having to change, um, that is definitely where I feel like we need to shift towards because it's not about changing somebody's mind. You know, we all have biases. We all have unconscious biases at times. My friend, um, you know, I love her. She's in South Carolina. She just moved from um, Binghamton, born and raised here. And, um, and now, and she's a runner. And so we were, I, I'm doing my little walk now while we're talking. And, um, and so she was saying, you know, Maisha, now I'm running on, I, I see a, a man and he's a black man. I'm not crossing the street. I'm going to run. And I'm like, okay, Sarah, that's great. So, I mean, another Sarah, beautiful name, Sarah. <laughs> um, and so I was like, that's, you know, that's wonderful. I, I, I part of, I, I was a runner too. Was I saw um, that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And I remember one time specifically being in, in the trails near Georgetown, and I was running, and I saw these white men. They didn't have much hair. I looked at them, and I was like, hmm, I'm turning right back around and going. Because it's not so much about race then. It's about also we as women are not safe in this country. Yes. We're not safe in the world. And so therefore, Sarah, it has nothing to do. I'm glad if you were in a place that you can feel comfortable not crossing the street when you see a male, then that's fine. But we're still living in a world that, it, you know, we have to have when I talk about these biases, and this is where I'm totally going off the tangent of what you're talking about. But there's, there's still some common sense in some of this that we're talking about, and these definitions, we can't get so hung up in them. Yes. We are human. Yes. We have biases. We can be racist, whether you're black, brown, yeah, I mean, we can have biases. Yes. When you act on them, when you have privilege and power in this world that in, in terms of race, white people do have, okay. then that's the issue. That's the, the, that's the problem that can't continue to go on because you are, you know, you are disempowering a, a group. You are disenfranchising a group of folks. You are not protecting the lives of individuals, you know. Um, and but it doesn't mean that you know those biases exist with everybody. It's how you act on them. But from the structural sense, I completely get what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Policies need to change, and that's where, you know, I'm a scientist, so I don't like to deal with you know um, even if with social work and public health. I, I don't try to change emotions. I try to change policies. I, I try to change environments that students aren't at risk when they drink, or if they drink, they're not going. To, they're going to be able to come home and they're going to be safe. Because me telling them not to drink, you know, <laughs> sure, I mean, sure. it's human behavior yes, sometimes. Yes. But if we can change structural policies, that's when change happens. Now, here's the thing. 
we need to talk more about this Amen. because you can't do that in 20 minutes. Amen. Okay? Absolutely. And so I might have said things that people might disagree with, and, I'm, and I, I get that, you know, um, but there, it's, it's, it's complex. But to be able to have these conversations right now, and not saying that we haven't had them in the past, but to use this time in a pandemic where we are sitting still, where we have time to rest, forced rest, but God is giving us the time to see, to change, and to do better. That's, um, that's you know, but what you just said, oh my gosh, that's, that's a lot. It, it is, okay. and, and we need, you are 100% correct, we need to do this more, and I'll, I'll, I'll push back on what you said one time, um, okay. that the church has not done what they should be doing, that the church has not engaged, because here's the thing, you're the scientist, I'm the theologian, and being a pastor of a church, I know I've, I've done it time and time and time and time again, where we something happens, something explodes, something is real and it's raw and whatever it is, whether it's racial relations or whatever, we then come in on Sunday morning and have our holy huddle and we close the world off. And I know I, I, I've done that throughout my career um, where we just kind of come and, and, and pray our little prayers and, and, oh Lord, bless me, don't worry about the people out there. Um, and I think we're very, very guilty of that. And I guess I've, I've reached a point in my ministry um, that enough is enough, that we need to have this time. We need to speak difficult truth. Mm -hmm. And even take time to uncover that difficult truth. Um, and, and that's really what I, I'm, I'm hoping, and, and, I, and I'm confident, that at least this is a start, not an end. This is a beginning. The race has just begun, mm -hmm. <laughs> my friend. It is. So what's your hope? What's your hope? What, 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 My hope what, is that you, you just ended on the race and, and being that it's like that this, we understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint. Yes. Like you said, that we don't, you know, we don't take this time. I read this article in New York Times. It's like, you know, look, we've been here before, but we have distractions, right? We can go into the movies or we can go, but now we are, we are kind of quarantined, right? In some kind of way at, at some of these points and we're not able to. So... We can't sprint through these things like you just alluded to. This is a marathon, and it's also, one of my colleagues said, this is a relay. Mm, so mm, mm, I think that it. at times mm. that, you know, yeah. uh, in, in terms of when we're talking social justice and, and racial, it's like, you know, it's, it's always the people of color or it's always in this, you know, situation with, you know, Black Lives Matter or black people, it's like, we're the ones who are supposed to run the entire race. No, you know, let's, let's be relay, you know, have a relay and, and pass that's it awesome. off to one another. And that, that's, that's what God wanted me to hear this morning. Yes. <laughs> we need to have relays oh, that, and, and that relays, profound. you know, and I'll end when I, I wasn't, a, um, I, I was a four by four in high school when okay. I got to college. I, I wasn't that fast anymore, but sometimes I got to sneak on <laughs> and, and you put different legs you know, different people who run different legs, you know, and, and they, because they have different strengths. Yes. And it's our, it's our owning our strengths. We're not supposed to be alike. We're not supposed to, God, if he wanted yeah. us all alike, yeah. I mean, I think he could have done that. <laughs> he probably could have. He probably yeah, could have, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he wants, he doesn't want that. And so it's just like owning what gifts that you have and what contributions you can make to that relay. And I think what now, what I see is, is even in that analogy, is like we're just always running our own races. When you were talking about the ch churches inside and yes, what's on the outside, yes, yes. it's like let's not run our own races. Let's run together, you know. Yeah. Um, let's do a distant medley. Go look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> let's that, have different, that, 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 different races. But, that is um, absolutely the same. what God so, yeah. wanted me to hear then. That, that's, a, that's a profound, profound <laughs> thought. Because it kind of takes me right back to where we started, and we'll, and we'll end here, Maisha. I, I could talk another yes, few but hours, <laughs> but I, we might lose our audience. Um, you were talking about your dad, you know, that both sides, the, the supportive role and the realist role, mm -hmm. and that's a delicate balance, mm -hmm. and so is the relay, because we're different. Mm -hmm. But we're so much more alike, mm -hmm. you know, and it's that it's it's moving through that delicate balance 
yep. of those similarities and differences, all under the understanding that this indeed is our Father's world. We were created by one God, and we are all children of God, and embracing all of that. So I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, because I, I needed to hear that this morning. And, 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 and thank you for your tears. I mean that. Thank you for your emotion. They come, they come all <clears> thank, <time. laughs> thank you for being you. And uh, I, I truly appreciate that. So friends, this has been awesome. Um, and so we will uh, wrap up our worship time here. And I just thank Maisha one more time for, for sharing your spirit with us. But let's conclude our time of worship this morning.